or good afternoon, I think it is just about, but I hope not to keep you from your lunch uh, for too long. Um, as well as using the uh, Chris Christopher Tower Reference Library, I also use the Hampshire Record Office um, in my research. And I used a record which I don't think Matthew mentioned, which was a card index of um, houses in Hampshire, which is basically, I haven't got an illustration of it, it's uh, cards, cards about that size with pasted onto them cuttings from country life advertising houses in the New Forest. And it was compiled by a, an employee of Harrods, apparently, who did it for the whole country. And the Hampshire Record Office have it. And it was almost one of my starting points. Anyway, uh, that wasn't how I was going to start. How do I, um, what do I press? The red button? The left and right, OK. Um, so first, a, a bit of background. Um, this was, I did an MA in Regional and Local History and Archaeology at the University of Winchester. In, and I wrote a dissertation entitled A Country House or a House in the Country? A Study of Country Houses in the New Forest and Their Residents, 1851 to 1923. Um, this was... Um, so this was a study of country houses in the New Forest and their residents. The aims were, firstly, to determine when and where the houses were built, compiling a gazetteer of information about their size and other characteristics. And secondly, by examining the backgrounds of the people who built, bought, sold or rented them, to determine to what extent the nouveau riche, whose fortunes were based on industry, trade, commerce or the professions, were joining the traditional landowning classes in their enjoyment of a country lifestyle. Was the increase in their numbers part of a process of suburbanisation? Was the New Forest an extension of the retirement belt of the South Coast? And to what extent were these houses thought of by their residents as a, as a country house, or were they rather a house in the country in the, in the modern um, uh, as they are today. This was all part of the debate. You have to, when you're doing a dissertation, you can't just list houses and find out juicy details. You have to be part of a debate, historical debate. And there was a debate around the gentr gentrification and the enterprise culture. An argument about whether the tendency of British entrepreneurs to aspire to be country landowners, rather than investing their money in developing their businesses, was the cause of British economic decline in the 20th century. So right from the start, as well as that, my supervisor wanted me to also compile a gazetteer. And this resulted in the dissertation becoming a rather unwieldy volume, uh, which is in the, uh, the library opposite, containing 222 pages, bearing in mind that they all have to be printed single-sided. Um, so I decided that the best way of presenting the gazetteer would be in a digital form that could be added to as more information was gathered. So it really is a work in progress. Um, so methodologically, this was a case study in using records that are widely available on the internet or in county record offices and local studies libraries. I used maps, uh, contemporary histories and guidebooks, and a particularly interesting um, resource here in, um, in the New Forest Reference Library was a history by Mrs. Bowden Smith, um, who also co um, collected stuff in scrapbooks. And she wrote about some of the houses around Lyndhurst and, and a bit further afield. That was particularly <laughs> useful. Um, sales notices, like the ones in the Hampshire Record Office, trade directories, newspapers, and census records. I was privileged to have access via the university to online newspapers, of which the Times was particularly useful, but also the Hampshire Advertiser and, and all the digital digitized early editions of the Ordnance Survey maps. Some of these are at such a large scale that you almost get plans of the houses, uh, or what I call footprints. Uh, these, these maps particularly cover the period from 1868, for some parts of the forest, to 1909. Um, 
Another particularly good source was, oh, well, just mention the card index. Um, and I also have a subscription to Find My Past for all the census and births and deaths and marriages. So tracking down details of the people uh, was really like a huge genealogy project. So it was, it was actually rather a large scope, which is rather often a failing of mature students doing MA dissertations. <laughs> um, we want to do far more than there's really time for. Um, so uh, I had to limit it chronologically, geographically, and by size, well, obviously size of property came into what, well, what is a country house. Um, so chronologically, um, this just shows the growth in properties from about under 40, under 40 big houses in the mid-century up to 120 houses in about 1920. Um, I started with White's 1859 directory and uh, the 1851 census confirmed that really it was, it was pretty stable at uh, about 38, 39 big houses in the New Forest. Uh, so it's sort of tripled in the, more than tripled in, in, the, uh, in this time period. And it really took off in the, in the, uh, in the 80s and 90s. Um, and then tails off a bit. But um, they're actually still building houses up to and during the First World War. And then, of course, it all disappears. They're all trying to sell them off. Well, not all, but there are a lot of houses being sold off in the 1920s. Um, so that was the period, probably rather too long. Um, and then the I always try to get, I have to get this this map into every presentation that I do because I love it so much. I've actually highlighted the yellow areas, which are the private lands. All the houses in the New Forest are built on these private lands or on the tiny little enclaves of um, Crown property, Crown Freehold, which, which you can't really see on this map. Um, so where are we? Yes. So what sort of houses are we talking about? I know from yesterday that you probably can't see this very well. Um, it's, but there are, there are big and small houses. And um, as for, for those of you who know the forest well, you'll all be aware that we don't really have houses the size of Downton Abbey. But Cadlan's House, Newtown Park, Pilewell House, Brockenhurst Park and Palace House to name just a few examples, are all within the perambulation. So they came into my, my remit. And they all look pretty big. But pretty big was not really scientific enough for the dissertation. And I had to have some firm criterion on which to base inclusion or exclusion of a house. Similar studies in other areas had used more than seven bedrooms as a minimum for a country house. And so initially, I, I used that as the entry criterion. However, the number of bedrooms was only known for a small proportion of the, um, of the houses initially, the ones that I'd got sales particulars for, um, leaving a large number of candidate houses for which other inclusion criteria had to be found. And then I found the, the 1911 census, which in which every single householder was supposed to record the number of rooms in their house. Absolutely brilliant source. However, I found <laughs> that for the larger houses, they'd had to record it on the... If they got more than 20 people in the house, they had a different form with, with two sides. And they'd actually recorded the, size, the number of rooms on the second side. And I think this is a national scandal that the... National Archives have not scanned those sides, that side. They've only scanned the first side of every census form. And they've stashed the, the real census forms away in the salt mines in Cheshire, and we can't access them anymore. So, <laughs> unfortunately, for the larger houses, the pretty big houses, I don't actually know how many rooms they had, which, which is a shame, really. So... Um, 
Basically, I ended up with a criterion of 10 rooms, seven rooms plus two reception rooms and a kitchen as an absolute minimum for a country house. Um, and sometimes I had to include houses on whether they looked big on the Ordnance Survey map, whether their footprint looked big enough. Um, I also excluded... No, we haven't quite, quite got there. Um, I also excluded any house that was associated with the job of the person living in it, which included Queen's House in Lyndhurst, the residence of the de Deputy Surveyor, um, Iworth Lodge, which was where the... Um, the gunpowder works was uh, vicarages and farms. So if it was predominantly a farm at, in the period, I didn't include it as a country house. So that brings me to the website, which, to be honest, will now shamelessly include any pretty big house in the New Forest area, perambulation or not, usage or not, regardless of, well, reasonably regardless of date, about which anyone can tell me anything interesting. So um, it has grown a bit because I'm able now to include all the interesting houses that I couldn't include from this dissertation. And um, that's basically what the website looks like. Um, so it's all based, it all comes out of the database that I used for my data. And it basically has two sides, houses and residents and also a list of advertisements. It's all based on a relational database. And if you don't know what a relational database is, it's pretty simple. I've got a table of houses, a table of adverts, table of residents, and then you can link a house with a resident or a house with an advert, or even two residents together. So I can actually start having relationships, personal relationships between people. Um, so that, that's really a little extra project that, I, that I've just started and, and I've, I've hardly skimmed the surface. Um, so when you get into the website there's a list of houses which has this sort of detail on it. Um, it it's filterable, you can sort it on any column. Um, there are links to Historic England for the listed buildings and to a site called the Lost Heritage Site uh, for the, the few houses that have been knocked down. Um, and a few other, I have got a few other links in there as well. Also a link to um, the location on the digital, digitised Ordnance Survey map. And at the moment, I'm going to the National Library of Scotland because that's a public resource. So here we've got a house called Bramshaw Hill. Um, oops, press the wrong button. Which is about there. This is the road going through Bramshaw. Um, that house is no longer there. So, right. So then for each house, each house has a page. They're going to have better pictures on them eventually. Um, more details, more details there. And links to the advertisements. So then I have a page for each advertisement which has the, this sort of detail on it. I don't know whether you can read that. Number of bedrooms, secondary or servants' bedrooms, dressing rooms, re reception rooms, etc. And facilities such as uh, a maid's or servant's room, a library, billiards, golf, hunting, timbered grounds, all the sorts of things that you still get on estate agents' details, but back, back in the early 20th century. Um, and then you can click through to the residents. There's also, this is the list of residents. Um, has less information on it, but then each resident has a page. More, more information on that. Um, right, and then for some of them, you can click on the people that they're related to, and for all of them, which houses they're associated with. Because you've got 
residents that move around. I mean, actually, it was quite interesting to find people leasing a house and then having one built, um, and perhaps living in two or three houses in the forest during their lifetime. So, as I said, it's a work in progress. There's a lot, a lot more to do. I have other things. I mean, this isn't the only thing I do by any means, and um, every so often I tweak it or add, add a bit to it. And really, I've got to add um, grid references so that it can be incorporated into the New Forest Knowledge site better. Um, and I've got to add better images, um, and images I've got permission to use. So um, I also want to increase the number of person-to-person -person relationships, um, add any information that anyone can tell me about houses, uh, improve how the site looks and I'm going to get a new domain name for it so I've put the new domain name there but I haven't actually moved it yet um, so having posed those questions at the beginning I thought I'd better try and answer them at the end um, I was looking at the background of, of the people that was my main aim really in the dissertation and I actually found that about half of them were indeed the traditional landowning classes um, so the myth of the retired army or navy officer which, which was certainly a myth that I um, subscribed to before, before all this is actually true I mean an awful lot of them were retired naval or army officers um, but I did find quite a few people in, who'd been involved in or derived their wealth from uh, trade, industry and commerce. Um, I found that very few of them were born here, although that may be because they tended to be born in London or at their mother's house, um, their grandparents' house. Um, but, but most of them died, well, 60% of them died here, and I think this is probably just a reflection of the fact that they did settle down and a lot of them were retiring. One, un, one thing that I really didn't expect to find was that only one family actually came from Southampton and moved out here. I did expect to find a few more sort of business people from Southampton deciding to come and retire to the New Forest and I really didn't find any apart from Perkins of Boulder. And those are just a few names of people who... Um, were sort of not really from the traditional landowning classes. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>